So this is a review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra and things will be similar but different from my S21 review but I still do want to mention that I'm not a pre-existing S20 Ultra user. I'm an iPhone user so cut me some slack. I'm not used to being exposed to this much innovation in a smartphone. So let's talk about my favorite aspect of this device and that would be the design, surprisingly. So I've always stated on this channel I'm not a big fan of big phones that sounded really weird but I need to correct myself. That also sounded really weird, but I'm not a fan of wide phones. And you see, I'm used to the Pro Max or Plus devices on the iPhone side of things. And the problem with those phones are they're just too wide. So I'm not a fan of wide phones. The OnePlus 8 Pro or even this S21 Ultra, they're slimmer, but it still rests comfortably in the palm of your hands. But the phone is tall, so you still get that big phone feeling and it's still really light. And I would say that my hands are a little bit on the smaller side, but with this phone, I'm able to get away with using it with just one hand. So the plus size iPhones are just too wide for reaching to the other side of the screen, and it just forces me to use two phones more often than I want. So the slimmer and taller design, I think, is the way to go, and I think Samsung really nailed it in terms of this design. So on to this display what a gorgeous display so i will admit that 1080 and 1440 the difference between them is subtle the only major difference i noticed when i was watching content that supports the high resolution for 1440 but when i was swiping through the ui or just through the menus i could barely tell the difference but if you change the setting to 720 yeah, you should only enable that setting for, you know, just emergencies when you want to have the best possible battery life. But this does have the new LPTO technology, so it changed the display from high refresh rate all the way down to a much lower refresh rate. And I will say that I know that people out there think that a high refresh rate is a bit of a gimmick and a waste of a feature in a smartphone. And I agree with you, but if you can dynamically change the display so it's not constantly running at 120 hertz or 90 hertz all the time i think with this lpo technology that's the way to go because it really does extend the battery life but you still get that amazing user experience so similar to the s21 the high refresh rate allows for you know a snappier ui and just makes everything feel more responsive samsung does a really good job of not letting the user know when it's below 60 or whatever refresh rate it's at it just constantly looks like it's always at that 120 hertz refresh rate so now i'm done talking about hertz because i've given that company enough free advertising i've never seen a better smartphone in my life i'm not kidding if you're brave enough to max out the brightness at night i guarantee you you will cry that's how bright the screen can get and i say if you watch hdr content at night wow it's just an amazing experience now the display is also curved but it's not as curved as the oneplus 8 pro or even as last year's s20 ultra so on camera it might look like the display wraps around to the edge but when you hold it in your hand you're really only holding the sides of the phone but that slight curve brings you that deeper immersion into the phone so the display i would definitely say that this looks more ultra than the regular s21 now build quality it does have the new victus glass on the front but it also has it on the back as well and it does make it a bit more slippery so i recommend throwing on a case or a skin entire phone feels solid robust definitely feels more ultra than the regular s21 it does have stereo speakers but the s21 speakers are ever so slightly louder and just deliver a bit more bass and i am amazed at how loud these speakers can get but they're also not only loud but really clear as well so the speakers definitely sound more ultra than the s21 Whew. battery life so just like the oneplus 8 pro all day battery life but it gets even better because i was able to use this phone two days without charging it with the 1440 uh display setting the adaptive refresh rate 5g it's just like a masterpiece when all these components and software are working together to give you an amazing experience i've never used a phone this good and had two days of battery life on a single charge 
Um, I'm curious to know if I enabled the power saving mode, how much better my battery life would be. But I mean, two days enough in terms of constant performance. I am pleasantly surprised with the battery life in this phone. I would say compared to the S21, which got me to about like 10 to 20% at the end of the day of a full charge, this was hovering around like 50, sometimes 60% at the end, end of the day after a full charge. So the battery life is definitely more ultra than the regular S21. So the unlocking methods, it does have facial recognition, but it worked about 50% of the time. So I used the fingerprint sensor 99.99% of the time. There was one time where the fingerprint sensor stopped working altogether after a few hours of first using this phone. If I have a clip, I'll show you guys. So for some odd reason, I'm not able to unlock the phone with the fingerprint sensor. Um, when I go to try and use it, it just says the fingerprint sensor is not responding. Try again later. <clears throat> this has happened to me about three times now, so I'm not exactly sure what's happening. Um, I'm going to try my other finger as well. Nothing. So this is actually a bit of an annoyance because this is, you know, how you get into the phone. Yeah. Not fun. So my phone was already on the latest software, so I did the good old IT trick of just, you know, turn it off, turn it back on. All my problems went away. You should try it. But the fingerprint sensor is pretty even between the regular S21 and this phone. So now let's talk about the camera. And I'm not a huge camera person, so this probably isn't a review if you want a deeper dive on it. I know cameras are a huge thing in smartphones now, but flagship phones from big tech companies the camera has been pretty solid for the last two to three years. And I'm just gonna say like 8K looks like a nightmare when trying to record, but at least you can say you record in 8K. Um, I recommend recording in at least 4K 60 or 30. Colors look great to me, photos look great to me, videos look great to me. But if I had to give it a honest rating, I'd probably give it like an eight out of 10. So are people looking at this camera with a fine comb gonna say that this camera isn't great? probably, but is the average person upgrading from like a four year old phone gonna say it looks better than what they had before? Probably. So this does have flagship specs, so let me go ahead and read them off to you. So this phone has the Snapdragon 888, has the IP68 rating, so you can go ahead and shower with the phone, has an AMOLED display, 120 hertz, like I said before, stylus support, that's a big one, but I, didn't use it because I don't want to pay extra to use a pen and I have fingers that can do this for me anyway to touch the screen. Um, what else, what else, what else? It has 12 gigabytes of RAM, sometimes 16. For the camera people, this is important, it has a 108 megapixel wide angle lens, 10 megapixel telephoto lens, 10 megapixel periscope telephoto lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. The selfie lens is a 40 mega, 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 Pixel, Wi-Fi 6 has wirelessly charging, and you can also wirelessly charge other devices. This has 5,000 milliamp hour battery, holy. Wait, 5,000 is in here? No wonder the battery is good. Yeah, the specs are definitely more ultra than the regular S21. Okay, I can't say just good things about this phone. I have to say something bad about it. It doesn't have an SD card slot, but I mean, like I said in my S21 review, I've had SD capabilities in my phone since 2013 since I had an iPhone. So I guess another moment of silence for the removal of the SD card slot. You were so young. How we all miss you dearly. I suppose I can knock a few points from the camera department. I do think it can be improved upon just a little bit more. But like I said, I think most people upgrading to this phone are going to be happy from what they had previously before. I suppose another negative is that this phone cost $1,200. This phone costs less than my rent. I have no idea why I'm living here. Wait, it's like the same price of the stimulus checks. Wait, we've only had two checks and it's been a year. Like, what are we? So $1,200 is a lot for a phone, but Samsung is notorious for doing sales on their products like a few months down the line. I've actually looked online on some online retailers and this phone is already priced in lower than $1,200. So if you do your due diligence, I do think you can snag this thing for under $1,200. 
even with like the regular S21, I think they're all priced down right now. So similar to my S21 review, if you live outside the US, you may want to look at other Android options just because you have more competition. In the US, Samsung is pretty much king of Android here, but other competitors are rising up like OnePlus, but to dethrone Samsung in the US, you got your work cut out for you. So the S21 for $1,200 is not a buy at this price. I'd wait till it drops a little bit, or if you can get a deal like those carrier promotions are doing like buy one, get one free, or just buy it less than $1,200, please. I don't think this, this phone is worth $1,200. But this phone holds the same status as my OnePlus 8 Pro review, and this is the best, actually it's early in the year, but I'm still gonna say it anyway, this is the best smartphone I've ever used, period. Now I know my non-US residents are probably gonna say like, oh, what about Oppo? What about Xiaomi? What about OnePlus? What about Huawei? We get it, you got a lot of choices, we don't. Don't rub it in. Like the S21 review, if you have a flagship Pro Plus, Pro Max, Ultra, whatever plus size, Ultra Edition phone you have, if you bought it in the last two, three years, I think you're okay, but if you are on four years or older, I will say that it's probably due for an upgrade. I'd honestly keep this phone, but I'm moving in a couple months and I need my $1,200. But by the end of the year, I may be moving over to Android unless the iPhone 13 blows me away. With all that being said, I appreciate every sub, like, and comment. And as always, guys, back to my miserable iPhone life. Much love. I love this phone, man. It's so good.